Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Dhabiya Palace. The cabinet extended its congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the people of Bahrain ahead of the holy month of Ramadan. The cabinet expressed its thanks and appreciation for His Majesty the King's directives announced during last week's cabinet meeting, adding that His Majesty's directives continue to shape efforts and initiatives that achieve citizens' aspirations. To mark Bahraini Youth Day and the designation of 2022 as the Year of Bahraini Youth, the cabinet commended His Majesty's support for Bahraini youth who represent the present and future of Bahrain. The cabinet directed the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs to develop integrated plans that support the skill set of Bahraini youth. The cabinet reviewed a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the result of the ongoing meetings between representatives from the government and the legislative authority with regards to their proposed amendments to pension fund legislation. The cabinet recognized the Council of Representatives and the Shura Council commitment to strengthening public sector cooperation across issues related to the interests of Bahraini Bahraini citizens. The cabinet also noted draft laws amending the regulation of pensions and retirement benefits for government employees and an amendment to the social insurance law. The cabinet condemned the drone attacks which targeted civilians and infrastructure in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and noted that such attacks lead to the instability of global energy supplies. It approved the launch of the Government Land Investment Platform, one of the Economic Recovery Plan initiatives, which aims to facilitate the partnership between the public and private sectors and to utilize government lands available for investment to deliver various projects and will service to the public. The platform will showcase to investors and developers the details of the government lands available for investment, as well as the type of investment intended. The cabinet approved the following memorandums. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU and an executive program between the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and the Ministry of Heritage and Tourism in Amman to enhance bilateral youth and sports cooperation. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Supreme Council for Environment and the Centre for Environment, Fisheries and Aquaculture Science of the UK, which aims to exchange information and develop capacities between the two countries in the environmental field. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and the Turkish Standards Institution of Turkey, which aims to enhance cooperation in the areas of standardization, conformity assessments and inspections to support bilateral cooperation in the commercial fields. A memorandum by the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism on the inclusion of Turkey to the 13 countries listed as partners for the Air Sea Freight Service in Bahrain. Companies based in these countries are allowed to apply for accreditation as operators of these services. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to four proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet also reviewed the following topics. A memorandum by the Minister of Finance and National Economy regarding Bahrain's economic report including the pre preliminary national accounts data for the fourth quarter of 2021 and for the entirety of 2022. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa directed to implement up to 50% telecommuting for employees working across government ministries, agencies and institutions during the holy month of Ramadan. The decision excludes wor those working across vital sectors including security, health, electricity, water, civil aviation affairs and other agencies with the emphasis on ensuring that services provided to citizens and residents are not affected by the decision. His Royal Highness directed the Civil Service Bureau to issue the necessary circulars and instructions to the relevant ministries, agencies and government institutions. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with employees from the Ministry of Interior, the Bahrain International Circuit and other agencies who have contributed to the success of the 2022 Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix. 
His Royal Highness highlighted that the Kingdom's workforce continues to excel in assuming responsibilities across national programs and projects. He emphasized that investing in Bahraini citizens remains a priority and that Bahraini citizens are at the core of all development projects within the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness noted that the Kingdom's success in hosting the international Formula One races over the past 18 years is attributed to the relentless efforts of the Kingdom's national workforce. In this regard, His Royal Highness extended his sincere gratitude and appreciation to the employees working at the Bahrain International Circuit and employees from across various supportive agencies whose efforts have contributed to the success of this year's international event and race. The employees expressed their sincere gratitude to His Royal Highness, noting that His Royal Highness's continued support is hugely appreciated and remains a motivation for working to secure the success of the races. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received His Majesty the King's Advisor for Media Affairs Nabil Al Hamar at Qadibiyah Palace. His Royal Highness was presented a book documenting the speeches of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa from 2014 to 2020, prepared by the Department of Media Affairs at the Royal Court under the supervision of Al Hamar in cooperation with the Ministry of Information. His Royal Highness was briefed on the book, which is the fourth volume that contains His Majesty's speeches. The publication is part of an archival project of the speeches given by His Majesty the King during his reign. His Royal Highness affirmed that all the Kingdom's national achievements are based on the visions of His Majesty the King, noting that His Majesty's speeches have laid the foundation of a brighter future for all. He highlighted the importance of documenting the Kingdom's history, qualitative achievements, and the developments it has witnessed, which were based on the visions of His Majesty the King and are reflected in the speeches. His Royal Highness expressed appreciation for the efforts made in preparing the book for the documenting and qualitative achievements made throughout the Kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a circular regarding the official working hours during the holy month of Ramadan. According to the circular, the Kingdom's ministries, authorities and public institutions' official work hours will be from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Services Committees of the Shura and Representatives Councils and the Government Task Force held a joint meeting under the chairmanship of the Representatives Council Speaker Fawziya Zainal and in the presence of the Shura Council Chairman Ali al Saleh and the Minister of Finance and National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. Members of both committees and representatives from the Ministry of Finance and Social Insurance Organization participated in the meeting. Based on the results of the continuous meetings between representatives of the government and the legislative branch regarding the proposed amendments to ensure sustainability of the pension funds and enhance their capability to honor their future obligations and protect the rights of the pensioners and subscribers, the government asserted its adoption of the proposed amendments by the legislative branch. Accordingly, the institution and not the individuals shall bear mainly the amendments through their commitments with the pension funds as follows. An increase in pensions by 6% with a maximum of 60 BD for the pensioner, in addition to dispersing an annual increase whenever surpluses are achieved in the funds in accordance with the law in force. Adding five optional incentive years above the normal retirement age for those who want and raising the maximum retirement pension to 90% and considering the normal retirement age as 60 years. Enrolling non-Bahrainis in the social insurance system by calculating the end of service gratuity. 
gradually increasing the percentage of insurance contributions until it reaches 27 percent, provided that the percentage of individual contributions does not exceed 1 percent. Maintaining the nominal years of service provided by the government bears the actuarial cost. Settlement of the retirement pension on the average of the last five years before retirement. The Speaker commended the Royal Directors and the continuous support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She also praised the efforts of the Minister of Finance to maintain such meetings between the legislative and executive branches to achieve common goals and aspirations. The Shura Council Chairman lauded the keenness of both branches on exchanging visions and reaching the agreements to preserve rights and national gains. He praised the continuous cooperation between the two branches to map out a common vision to overcome challenges and ensure sustainability of the pension funds. The Minister of Finance affirmed that reaching this agreement between the executive and legislative branches is a boost to the diverse successes aimed at serving citizens and further enhancing cooperation between the two branches. He praised the role of the legislative branch in supporting the efforts to overcome the challenges facing the pension funds. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Naimi, opened a science exhibition at Al Ahd Al Zahar Secondary Girls School. He affirmed that the Kingdom's students have made a continuous progress in their knowledge, abilities, and skills that will keep pace with global developments. He commended the efforts of the Ministry's educational cadres to develop the level of educational services and noted the contribution of educators, students, and parents in ensuring the sustainability of education during the pandemic. The Minister toured the exhibition and was briefed by students and Arabic, English, Japanese, and sign languages about their experiences related to the fields of science. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, participated in the diplomatic summit held in Negev at the invitation of the Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid. Also participating were the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Egypt, Samah Shikri, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation, and Moroccan expatriates, Nasser Borita, and the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. The four ministers discussed the latest regional and international developments and their repercussions on the region's security and stability. Following the meeting, the ministers held a press conference in which they affirmed their country's determination to continue coordination and joint cooperation to enhance peace efforts, protect the region's security and stability, combat terrorism and its financing, and enhance joint cooperation and development fields to achieve people's aspirations. Dr. Zayani said that Bahrain has always believed in the importance of peace, dialogue, coexistence, and mutual respect, principles which are reflected and embodied in the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al and the policies implanted by the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He added that there is a need to put into practice the principles behind the Abraham Accords, namely those of dialogue, cooperation and mutual respect to establish genuine, sustainable coexistence and interdependence between participants. He further underscored that part of this process will be renewed efforts to resolve the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and Bahrain continues to urge both parties to come together and negotiate a resolution that establishes a viable state for the Palestinians and protects the security and interests of all parties. The minister concluded by affirming that this meeting is important for deepening and strengthening bilateral relations as well as an expanding multilateral cooperation and interdependence between countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, and the Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid signed the joint war and peace strategy between the two countries on the sidelines of the Negev summit at the invitation of the Israeli Foreign Minister. The strategy included the principles of strengthening joint cooperation through specific programs and to increase the volume of trade exchange and enhance communication between the peoples of the two countries, with a focus on youth, highlighting the joint relationship as a model for coexistence and tolerance between religions and cultures in the countries of the region and the world. World, and supporting efforts made within the framework of the peace process in the Middle East to enhance security and stability in the region. The strategy also identifies the main sectors that will be focused on within the joint course of action, including innovation, trade and investment, food and water security, climate change, renewable energy, health, educational and academic cooperation, digital security and tourism. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, met with his Israeli counterpart, Yair Lapid. The two sides discussed bilateral cooperation and ways to enhance and develop them in the implementation of the joint action plan. They also reviewed relations and the results achieved within the framework of the Declaration Supporting Peace, the Abraham Accords, Memorandum of Understanding, and the agreements signed between the two countries. The two ministers also discussed the latest political and security developments in the Middle East, regional and international situations, and their repercussions on the region's security and stability, and ways to enhance coordination and joint cooperation towards these issues, in addition to issue of common interest at the regional and international levels. The Under Secretary for Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs at the Ministry of Interior, Sheikh Hicham bin Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, announced the launch of the Digital Residency and Passport Issuance Services for the first time through the National e Government Portal. He stressed that the launch of these services constitutes a new step in providing more facilities in light of the development and prosperity witnessed by Bahrain. Sheikh Hicham stated that nine initiatives were completed during the first quarter of this year, the most important of which is the launch of these two new services indicating that the launch of these digital services is a qualitative leap in the work of the nationality, passport and residence affairs. The CEO of the Information E-Government Authority, Mohamed Al-Qaid, confirmed that the launch of the two electronic services comes in line with the decision of the Coordinating Committee and the decisions of the Cabinet to cancel paper documents and certificates and provide them with citizens and residents electronically. We are pleased today to launch our uh, electronic residency plus the issuance of uh, the passport for the first time. Uh, these two services uh, will create a big change in how we do our business. Uh, it will enable people to issue their residency seamlessly. Plus, we will reduce our workload uh, by 50% in the service centers and improve our services and focus on e-visas issuance, which we would like uh, to do 24 hours uh, a day. Uh, and the issuance of the passport uh, will enable people uh, to apply and, do, uh, and go through their process seamlessly without any delays. The, uh, today we announced two services, part of, of uh, many initiatives and services has been approved by His Royal Highness Crown Prince uh, Prime Minister uh, in the Cabinet to uh, transform uh, most of the uh, services in the uh, passport and uh, residencies and visas. We announced today the uh, visa and the passport issuance for first time. Many customers will benefit out of those services and hopefully in the coming 12 months we can uh, deliver uh, many more initiatives to uh, transform the services by the uh, uh, passports and residencies.